Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is October 17th, 2016, and I got an invitation to be on Steve Olson's show, WSO, and special guest, Wayne Steiger. Naturally, I accepted Steve's invitation, and here is the first segment of the show. However, the opening of the show was so rudely interrupted by somebody tapping in and wanting to listen to the important things that we have to say. And they even remotely shut my computer down, and I had to re-enter the show. So let's listen up. All right. So everybody, we were just uh, shut down, basically, so we had to jump over to another account. I had to turn on encryption and proxy. Hopefully that will help. Uh, Wayne and I are not having any problems right now, but Scott got shut down. Um, so Wayne, you're going to continue on with some stuff that, you know, this is the same evening that you took the photograph that I showed in that last segment, right? Yeah, this is actually morning. Um, so here you can see the whole sequence of events. Um, so um, as you can see, it's still dark out. Um, zooming in, bright moon. You can see lights are still on in the neighborhood. Um, now this is about 15 minutes later. You can see dawn has already come up. And notice, Steve, everything looks normal, right? Nothing problem here. Went in there, got another view of it, and nice then moon this shot. happened. Nice moon wow. shot. Yep, then this happened right here. And as you can see, um, I knew, and this, this to show everyone, this is what the sun was doing in the east. I mean, it was spectacular in the colors, just absolutely. They were being not so much illuminated from the east, but you can see that they were being illuminated from the west as well. And you can see the density uh, and you have to understand that this is in normal light to the human eye, and a camera is just picking up what I was seeing. And now, as this moon begins to go, it begins to. And so what I've done here, I reversed it out. There it is, Steve. You want to know what another sun looks like? It's big. Well, there you go. It's a, to me, it's a full, full circle. Um, you know, triangle of evidence, and I want, and, and so if anybody wants, wants to ask me what I think about what's happened in the last three days, my position is that we just had the, the uh, brown dwarf just went behind our moon and the earth, and we saw it. I believe that's what's happened here, and so here's a question for our physicists. So, Steve, work with me on this. So, I know, you and I know, because we put it on solar scope, where the moon was. The moon was in between the earth and this brown dwarf that was passing. The moon was taking an assault that uh, had to be something else. But here's my question. A brown dwarf is basically now has an iron core, but it's not a dead star. It still has a heartbeat, so to speak. It's just that the fusion is now at such a low level that the lighter elements such as uh, helium and nitrogen have gone, all right? So as this star comes in closer to our sun, which is a yellow dwarf sun, as it begins to take the solar flux particles and take it from our sun and begin to pull it into itself, there is a reaction, as I understand, in the old fusion engine that it starts cranking up because it continues, starts absorbing all of these particles. Now, my question is this. Would not the density of the electromagnetic field of this brown dwarf star be of such intensity that it would be outpowered even our sun because our sun is still basically a gaseous star that's still in its midlife but still burning a lot of lighter elements? Am I correct on that? You are, and our physicist said that that's why our star appears to be now burning helium, and that's common knowledge now. That okay. is being choked by the iron oxide dust that's been her point since the beginning so now you have um just so we know i'll pull this up here so here it is everyone can see um we've been tracking this we know this now we know that our planet our and let's just i'll pull this up steve so everyone can see this has still not gotten back to normal and you even have, I think, isn't there a later? I want to see something here. I'm trying to get the latest. Um, look at that, Steve. 
So see how Wayne, see how the um those clo those closed loops those are magnetos here. Mm -hmm. the red ones. Notice yeah. how that red one is being stretched out to the left. Yep. And then notice how our north south field lines are like like still kind of wacky. <laughs> you like, have one that's even better than this one, Steve, from this morning, right? I do actually. Here, let me grab this. Yeah, go ahead. You take controls, buddy. So anyway, listen. That's my point, folks. It was here. I think the density of this thing is. Look at that. I mean that. I mean that looks like a rat. Yeah, and see this. On crack. Yeah, this is what made me. This is kind of what convinced me that we were dealing with something with a high magnetic force. Is those closed field lines just reaching out and going, "Hey, there's something out there," you know? Exactly. Exactly. And that's it. That's the story. So welcome back, Scott. Okay, guys, can you hear me better? Yeah, thank you. Hey, they shut my whole computer down. <laughs> yeah, awesome? we know what that feels like. Yeah, I'm serious. And this is a brand new, uh, brand new Euler Packard laptop, man. It's <laughs> like two weeks old. They better not destroy it. I'll send them a bill. <laughs> 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 They're going to send you back a nice IOU. <laughs> well, you know well, then you know what I'll do? I'll just take it off my taxes. Exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then the IRS can audit you, and then and you can explain what happened. Well, I'll let my cousin take care of that because he's worked for the IRS for about 17 years, so I'll send him the bill. <laughs> so uh, the only reason I wanted to show you guys this was because um, a subscriber uh, said to me that he has defeated the optic system using a very simple technique. He basically took the lens out of his telescope and then he used that lens to refocus the beam into a cell phone. And okay, run that by me again. So imagine take, having a lens in your hand. Yes, sir. And imagine you just pointing the light of that lens around in the, in the camera of your cell phone until you see something. Okay. What I theorize based on Jeff P's theories is that that basically what you did was you reestablished a focal point on your camera, and that's what's really there. Just a theory. Just a theory. All right. I'll have to munch on that one, but... Here's yeah. a corroborating piece of evidence that shows... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that guy sent you that. I got that one, too. I got that one, too. Hey, listen, number one, a five-star award for originality. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's a great campaign, and I love when people are creative like that, by the way, from a marketing perspective. I know you appreciate it too, Scott. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, I, I, I had a guy the other day send me, a, uh, I think it was an all sky cam uh, photograph of a seagull sitting on the lens. And he said, I found Nibiru. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, while we're on this shot here, so I just read yesterday, Space.com put a press release out that, Every, I guess it's once a week, they meet up with the astronomy group from, I think it's the University of Berkeley, California. They go out and they launch balloons. In these balloons, their sensors can pick up infrared. They can also pick up cosmic rays. Here's the deal, boys. They are now reporting that in less than 10 months, the cosmic ray index has increased by 12%. Yes, I heard that. Yep. Yeah, I also heard um, today also radiation readings uh, are, are up. Um, it was, I, I watched so many reports today. Where I think they said that they were up 12%. Yes. In, in, in a, in a, yeah, 12% in a certain area or something like that. Yeah, no, by the way, uh, Steve, uh, according to the University, I guess, of Norway, your area up in your part of the country, you are the prime area, my friend, on the planet to receive uh, potential blackouts for um, ca uh, solar flares. Well, thank you for sharing that one. Sure. I mean, you know, I just wanted to share oh the joy. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I'm so happy. Hey, so when we're talking about the radiation, I, I know this sounds comical, but I had someone send me, and they, they work in the aerospace, aerospace industry, and he pointed out, he said, Wayne, we wrap a lot of this sensitive equipment in mylar. And I wasn't getting it. Mylar apparently does have some good characteristics, and cosmic ray radiation because apparently cosmic ray is what isn't it the most isn't it the highest in the uh, on the on the scale what well, we have from anywhere from the ultraviolet to the infrared to microwave is it cosmic gamma wave it, you know what let me let, let's do this wayne i want to show everybody something here real quick because i think that you know it will help them to understand when we talk about all these different waves right 
So a star puts out all kinds of energy across the spectrum, right? And right. So when we see this energy coming from behind the earth, and then we see the visual evidence, and we're going to turn it to you, Scott, so play around with your screen and try to see where your menu is. But, um, you know, basically the data, the facts, okay, the facts of what we just saw indicate some type of a star or magnetar at the very least behind us. And yeah. It's, it's, this is the diagram right here. And I think we had the full tilt boogie going on Friday and Saturday. Because I got to tell you what, guys, we, the people were acting very weird Friday. I mean, I don't know if y'all felt it, but. Oh, God. Yeah. How about you, Scott? I stayed out of public. Um, <laughs> yeah. we, believe it or not, um, we, uh, the, the last time I was on um, Greg's radio show, the, the, the Christian radio show, The Front Porch, we actually talked about the effects of people who have or have been diagnosed as being bipolar and, and, and will this affect them. And my mom was a, um, was a psychologist and a, and a professor. And uh, I looked into this, and that is an absolute fact. Bingo. That is an absolute 100% fact. And I, I, you know, this goes into all of these movies about the zombie apocalypse. Once again, the movies, you know what I mean? They're kind of, um, you know, putting it out there and telling us what to uh, look forward to. But, um, you know, yeah. what, I, what I looked into is, yes, people that are susceptible to this bipolarism will be affected by this tremendously. And they're also finding that uh, patients that um, have susceptibility to cardiac issues, pacemakers, yep, all of them are being impacted. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Scott, because I, I, I'm telling you, it was just a very weird thing. And I heard a lot of people who are not awake simply come in and said, it was a very weird feeling day. There we go. You know what I'll have to do is uh, I, have, I have two very good friends of mine that are emergency room trauma nurses. Excellent. And, uh, I'm going to have to uh, start getting an update from them on, uh, on some activities that come in because, I, I mean, over the years, I've heard some really wild stories from these guys. But uh, this is definitely something to, to look into. And, and like I said, what I, what I looked into this, there's a, there's a definite impact medically uh, and physically on, on people. It's amazing, but it's, it's true. Well, I've actually read in one report that, so the question has always been is when we see, you know, for instance, uh, pulsars and gamma ray burst coming in, how does it affect the chromosomal level of our DNA? And, you know, and I, I know it's out there, it's a theory that our DNA is actually being impacted due to these higher levels of radiation that we are not normally exposed to. But who knows? You guys are bumming me out, man. <laughs> Check this out, man. Let me get on to some cool stuff, man. Like people <laughs> and stuff like that. Well, this, is the ninth, the coffee. <laughs> this is the ninth blood moon that Kaylee Hannibus, my just wonderful partner, and hopefully she, she sends to everybody. So if you haven't heard from me, you will, because she shares with everybody. But she has recorded nine blood moons on the full moon in Arizona in a row. This one's from 1015. Yeah, she's, uh, she's one up on me. Um, I, I've been watching these blood moons, and they are also, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they're off schedule. Yeah. Yes. They're very, very off schedule, because I believe the one that we had in September came a week early, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> oh. so our timelines are all messed up. I mean, no doubt. I mean, every, everything is all messed up. And, you know, I was, uh, I, was, I was talking to a few of my team members today, and, and one of them made a remark and said, where did the last two weeks go? Bingo. Where did this time go? I mean, I, I put a 14-hour, 15-hour day in, so I know where my time goes. But I started thinking about it, and, yeah, where has this time gone? You know, I could remember it was the beginning of August. Now – Boom, it, it, we're in the middle of uh, October, and what am I going to wake up in? It's going to be Thanksgiving. So are we in a time warp or something, or a time's bending? It's, it's are we experiencing <laughs> what abductees say that they experience, you know, and missing time? Um, I agree with you. It, it's a weird phenomenon, isn't it, when you think about it? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I want to bring something up, and I wanted to see if you guys have experienced this. But over the last month, um, on, on crystal clear days when there's not a cloud in the sky, which is kind of 
rare because they chemtrail so much. But I was driving down the street, and it was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I didn't have any sunglasses on, you know, nothing, just driving down the road. And everything looked like it was lit by fluorescent light. Yeah. It, it didn't look like sunlight. Everything looked ultra three-dimensional. And I literally stopped in the middle of the street and, and got out and thought maybe it was an effect uh, of the sun, you know, through my windshield. And everything looked the, the, the same. The, the light did not look like regular sunlight. It looked artificial. You know, I'm not getting into the whole artificial sun theory, but it just, uh, you know, and I've been experiencing this now all of, all of July, all of August. I noticed it again in September. Now, I haven't noticed it yet in October, but I'm just waiting for it. But have you guys noticed anything like that? Or? Well, I can tell you that my wife and I have. We go out, you know, for walks and in the middle of the day, and I can tell you back in September, we, we actually recorded it where <laughs> it was the weirdest phenomenon. Um, I used to be in the video industry, and it was like someone had turned on a uh, Google light that uh, just simply made everything very intensely bright. Exactly. That's exactly. And the detail of everything was, was, yes. was, was amazing because I never, I never saw anything through my eyes like that before. No, no. And she commented, and, and that's what it drew me back to. It was like I was on a lighting set. So, and that sun, by the way, this weekend... As everyone noted, and even here with our meteorologist, the sun was intensely hot. It hurt your skin to be out in it. Yes, I'd have to agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, we, had, uh, we had some very decent weather. Um, the temperatures were cool. I think we were at like about 71 or 72 degrees. But if you, if you literally stood outside and caught the direct sunlight, you can feel the intensity, the burning sensation on your skin and I was just at a red light had my you know left arm sitting on the windowsill of the car and while I was at the red light it literally that few seconds I could feel the intensity burning my elbow burning the skin so we noticed something today uh, my wife has a rhubarb plant as everyone knows the leaves get really big um, it had burns on it Wow <laughs> so I'm gonna take some pictures we'll post them for everybody but they have burn marks on in October uh, yeah yeah I think that they were radiation burns. I swear, because all right, Steve. So you're you're screwing with us here. What do you what's going on here? <laughs> I just thought that people would like to see the most recent images that that we've been getting. And I know Scott, you've been getting the same stuff that we're getting. And I'm just showing this while you guys are talking. I'm just enjoying this conversation. I'm listening to you guys. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, man. I mean, the, the you know again the corroborating evidence. And Scott, do you mind going? Can you show us that, that Scott that uh, photo or that footage? I'm sorry, from Scotland. Yeah, I have the I have the Scotland footage. I only have it on my on my cell phone. You, can you pull up the actual video and? Oh heck yeah! Yes, absolutely, just, we can do that. I just yep. just just mute my big mouth in it because uh, I was having a man. I was mad today. <laughs> oh, I, I, listen, you saw my comment. I'm just like preaching, yeah. man. Because I know exactly what you're going through. I sometimes just spew out like my sailor tongue comes out. And then all my Christian church ladies come out and tell me to keep stop swearing. And I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it, just, it just, uh, just slipped out of my mouth there. And, you know, the last time I said something like that, oh, I don't know, maybe I was about 13 years old. My grandmother shoved a bar of that old-fashioned brown <laughs> soap in my mouth. My God. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys ever tasted that, but it's the worst stuff in the world. I think Peter Binsley, Bing, Bingsley said it best in uh, Christmas Story. <laughs> Conte taste. <laughs> yeah. My okay. Lord. But I'll tell you what, you know, speaking of um, videos and subscribers, I have an absolutely beautiful subscriber base of people that is just literally growing on a daily basis. And I have this absolutely beautiful man, subscriber, his name is Mike, down in the Mountains of North Carolina. Good place to be. He, he has a almost a four thousand dollar telescope. You could hook it up to your laptop, the whole nine yards. Sends me an email and says, "Listen, this has been sitting around here for about a year now. I was going to take up some uh, astronomy, but I think you could use it more than me." He boxed it up today, gave him the address, and he mailed it. Showed oh me. God. I swear to God. Swear to God, I swear to God. Swear to God. <laughs> but he no, he, no, no. Listen, man, <laughs> you nailed it, brother. Because let me tell you something. These people are generous-hearted, sharing people. They don't mind sharing all of their material. 
they don't mind giving you a true advice, good critical advice. I mean, guys, let me tell you something. I have, sure, we've got a few crazies, you know what I mean? People a that few. Are, a few. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But let me tell you, the, the overwhelming majority of the people that I talk to and that I communicate with are just rational people, doctors, lawyers. Today I was communicating with a PhD, um, not in the field of Nibiru or anything like that, but to somebody who's been an observer, you know? These are educated people, okay? A lot of people. They're good people. I mean, you're right. We, you know, there are those who I think that they're either being paid, of which we now know, and so um, that, you know, why they, they, they want to sow such bad karma into their lives, that's fine. Uh, speaking of the trolls that seem to seem that they're doing some sort of public service. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. Um, but, you know, when I hear the stories, just like what you were just saying, Scott, and I know of a couple of other incidences, there, there's good men and women out there, and they care, and they're concerned, and they're looking for answers, and they're not getting it from the media. The media is all into this. Well, the, the, all I can tell you about the, uh, the fourth estate, it's jumped off the cliff. And so people like you, Scott, Steve, y'all provide an avenue that can now say, I can trust these men. And that's what we got. And it, it tells me that the human spirit is still good and still strong. Oh, absolutely. 100%. You know, and, and uh, like you were saying about this, you know, these, these debunkers, they think they're doing humanity a favor. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the guy down in uh, New Zealand, what's his name there? Dave, the cameraman or whatever, Daza. Now he's critiquing every single one of my videos as they come up. He went on YouTube uh, the day before yesterday and put my whole entire personal Facebook page, photograph, my whole background, everything live, which I don't care. You know, it actually gave me some exposure for my beautiful face. But uh, for him to be so low because of the, um, I think it was the, the footage that we were all discussing, you know, the, the moon going, orbiting the sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. okay, okay, Dave. Whatever you say. Buddy. But I, um, you know, I sent him a email and I said, look at the bottom line. You say that you live in New Zealand. I like your fancy little 007 accent. But here's the bottom line. When it's all said and done, buddy, New Zealand is going to be gone. <laughs> yeah. You better get a flotation device. Or you could join us with your amateur astronomy background. Well, here's the deal, too, Scott, in situations like that. They never do anything of their own. No. They're not creative enough or talented enough to put their own information. No, they have to steal. They have to plagiarize. They have to go and try to do character assassinations. And this is the side of humanity that we all want to endure ourselves to. If you're so damn smart, then put your own information up. Put your own videos up, and we'll critique you. And by the way, we'll put our physicist on your ass, and we'll see just how bright you are. You, you go, ass. boy. You go, Wayne. <laughs> see, wait, all and you got to do, you you gotta do is say the word troll, and Wayne and Scott are going to just lose it. You know, mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. And I lose it, too. You know what? They're, they're, such, they're such small penis men. <laughs> because you know what? They can't do anything else. <laughs> don't call me. Don't right. call me, Mimi. No, no. Go ahead, Wayne. I can't but, but that's the point. They hide behind a computer because they can't come out and do anything of their own. I mean, come on, you piss ants. Hey, I had, you got an education, get a refund. I had one guy who trolls my YouTube channel. Um, but he's fake. He has a, um, a male model photograph. As, oh, yeah, there you go. As his profile picture. Probably weighs 325 pounds and probably hasn't taken a bath in about a week. But go on. I digress. Yeah. yeah, so he, um, you know, he challenged me to a, an MMA fight. Mixed <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to solve the Nibiru uh, problem. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. So I said, wow, mix, mixed martial arts. Well, I said, I'll tell you what. When mixed martial arts started coming out in the beginning, when it, when it was, you know, bare knuckles in the octagon, I took up Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. And I studied it for 15 years. I have a few scars from matches. And I also have the financial means to get on a plane today and fly over to the UK. And we can do this. <laughs> we can do this. Because I'm not afraid of anybody. I don't care. Uh, I'll tell you what. I happen to know of a very good promoter. We'll actually uh, put it on the internet and we'll make money and donate it to charity. Well, here's the thing. You know, uh, your, your, your number one fan... Uh, from no, w don't, don't say, don't say, I'll cut this out, man. I will not say your name on my show. I okay. Will not, 
Any well, anyways, I got into a, I got into one of these new Google Hangouts. Oh, really? I haven't heard yes. of those. I got into a Google Hangout with the trolls and Word Salad Boy and uh, Dave the Cameraman, and I let them gang up on me for three hours, and I destroyed them. And it was publicized on on um, on YouTube. Excellent. And and I just happened to have a 13-page report from a professor at the University of Pittsburgh who happens to have, the University of Pittsburgh happens to have a phenomenal astrophysics, physics, and astronomy course of study. And also a president of a local Pittsburgh astrology, or astrology, <laughs> astronomy club. I sent the footage and I sent links to their debunking videos. I got a 13-page PDF report back from the one gentleman so i decided to rub it in daza's face and you should have saw astro boy and daza salivate on this hangout meeting and they wanted me to produce and give to them the 13 page pdf file asap i, and I said i said no 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 we're going to do this we're going to have another videotaped uh, hangout meeting on google because you can record it for youtube and my guys, who are professionals, they're not amateurs, they have agreed to join in with us and discuss this 13-page report compared to Astro Boy's Excel spreadsheet and his little computerized models that he made in his laboratory. And they pressed me, oh, come on, let's see it now, let's see it now. Well, I said, listen, I'm also a very good poker player. And why would I put my cards on the table right now? Because you guys want to study this, and then you want to come up with a debunking uh, philosophy? <laughs> no way. Come on. Give me a break. And then it was, it was it, everything collapsed after that. After I wouldn't give my, give my cards up, yeah, Daza left. But I stayed on. I stayed on. I faced them. Well, you know, the question is, why are they fighting something? You know, That's you know, what I said. Yeah. I mean, What's why? the big deal? What is the big deal? What is it? What, why are you, what, what are you in for? If, if you're out there to help humanity, start your own channel and show the world your benevolency by how your intelligence can show the world opposite. That's just it. They have their own channels and they have 300 subscribers or yeah. whatever. <laughs> so that's why I'm not going to publicize these people, guys. I'm not going to give them any credence on my channel anymore. I'm not going to acknowledge them. I'm not anything because they, you know, look, man, you know, the people that I, I, that I like to debate with is Terrell Blackstar, for example. I have a big debate going with Terrell, and he and I are now friends. But I told him, I said, it's okay to debate as long as we don't hate. Yeah, and there you go. There you go. He laughed, he laughed and he, he, he came back. He told me today that their, that their cause of that magneto reversal was the moon. And I shot back to him three scientific objections. And his response back to me was, you'll see. I said, that's not a scientific <laughs> response. But see, we're debating what's going on in the cosmos from a – too aware of people having a debate. This coming out and trying to tell me that none of this stuff is real isn't going to work with me anymore, man. Absolutely not. No, not when we see phenomenon in the skies. Um, and, you know, the reason why I think so much of this shows up again at sunset and sunrise is that it's just the way that we can see these objects. And, Scott, when you were talking about the person seeing it from Scotland, Pittsburgh, all the way down to Hawaii, in my mind, I'm seeing almost the uh, transition path of an object. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I was on this all day today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we had to end that segment. As you can hear, the audio quality got kind of bad there in the end, simply because we were being tapped into. The information that we uncover on a daily basis is definitely important to the powers that be. And the research that I do and that Steve and Wayne conduct every day is very important. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, we deal with risky business because we want to uncover the truth. Steve is working on the final segment of the show, and it will be uploaded later on today. And I also want to add that these two gentlemen come from extraordinary backgrounds. So if you haven't subscribed to WSO, jump over there and subscribe. And with that said... I'd like to thank all of our Nibiru watchers. You guys do a fantastic job. would also like to thank you for your loyal subscribership. 
You can continue to email your photographs and your video to NibiruPlanetX2016 at gmail.com. And don't forget to share our videos with your friends and family members on Facebook. And subscribe to the Nibiru channel for all of our current updates. And like I always say, keep an eye in the sky. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is October 17th, 2016, and I got an invitation to be on Steve Olson's show, WSO, and special guest, Wayne Steiger. Naturally, I accepted Steve's invitation, and here is the first segment of the show. However, the opening of the show was so rudely interrupted by somebody tapping in and wanting to listen to the important things that we have to say. And they even remotely shut my computer down, and I had to re-enter the show. So let's listen up. All right. So everybody, we were just uh, shut down, basically, so we had to jump over to another account. I had to turn on encryption and proxy. Hopefully that will help. Uh, Wayne and I are not having any problems right now, but Scott got shut down. Um, so Wayne, you're going to continue on with some stuff that, you know, this is the same evening that you took the photograph that I showed in that last segment, right? Yeah, this is actually morning. Um, so here you can see the whole sequence of events. Um, so um, as you can see, it's still dark out. Um, zoom it in, bright moon. You can see lights are still on in the neighborhood. Um, now this is about 15 minutes later. You can see dawn has already come up. And notice, Steve, everything looks normal, right? Not the problem here. Went in there, got another view of it, and nice then this shot. happened. Nice moon wow. Yep, then this happened right here. And as you can see, um, I knew, and this, this to show everyone, this is what the sun was doing in the east. I mean, it was spectacular in the colors, just absolutely. They were being not so much illuminated from the east, but you can see that they were being illuminated from the west as well. And you can see the density uh, and you have to understand that this is in normal light to the human eye, and a camera is just picking up what I was seeing. And now, as this moon begins to go, it begins to. And so, what I've done here, I reversed it out. There it is, Steve. You want to know what another sun looks like? It's big. Well, there you go. It's a, to me, it's a full, full circle. Um, you know, triangle of evidence, and I want, and, and so if anybody wants, wants to ask me what I think about what's happened in the last three days, my position is that we just had the, the uh, brown dwarf just went behind our moon and the earth, and we saw it. I believe that's what's happened here, and so here's the question for our physicists. So, Steve, work with me on this. So, I know, you and I know, because we put it on solar scope, where the moon was. The moon was in between the Earth and this brown dwarf that was passing. The moon was taking an assault that uh, had to be something else. But here's my question. A brown dwarf is basically now has an iron core, but it's not a dead star. It still has a heartbeat, so to speak. It's just that the fusion is now at such a low level that the lighter elements such as uh, helium and nitrogen have gone, all right? So as this star comes in closer to our sun, which is a yellow dwarf sun, as it begins to take the solar flux particles and take it from our sun and begin to pull it into itself, there is a reaction, as I understand, in the old fusion engine that it starts cranking up because it continues, starts absorbing all of these particles. Now, my question is this. Would not the density of the electromagnetic field of this brown dwarf star be of such intensity that it would be outpowered even our sun because our sun is still basically a gaseous star that's still in its midlife but still burning a lot of lighter elements? Am I correct on that? You are, and our physicist said that that's why our star appears to be now burning helium, and that's common knowledge now. That okay. is being choked by the iron oxide dust that's been her point since the beginning so now you have um, just so we know I'll pull this up here 